Have you ever spent hours on an edit only to watch it back and feel like something is off? Like it's not terrible, but it just doesn't look professional. That was me for way too long. But then I started really trying to focus on learning some basic design principles and found four super simple design rules that instantly upgraded my edits. No extra plugins, no complicated effects, just fundamentals that every pro designer uses. Now here's the thing. As editors, we tend to obsess over transitions, sound effects, or whether we're using the right preset pack, but we often ignore the design side of editing. And the truth is, good design principles are what separates amateur looking edits from ones that feel clean, premium, and intentional. And the best part is, it's super simple. So in this video, I'll walk you through four rules and show you how I started using them in my own edits. And trust me, once you understand these, you'll never look at your edits the same way again. The first rule is scale. Here's the mistake I used to make. I'd just throw text or graphics on screen and resize it until it looked fine. The problem? Everything felt flat. Once I started using scale intentionally, my edits completely transformed. Here are some basic rules for this. Bigger elements grab more attention. Smaller elements carry less visual weight. And when you animate size changes, like zooming in on a shape or text, it instantly signals importance to the viewer. Think of scale as a spotlight. You're choosing where the eye should go first. But what if everything needs to be the same size and color? That's where the next rule saves you. Rule number two is color and contrast. Contrast is just a fancy word for difference. That could be the difference of color, brightness, speed, or even shape. For example, if everything on screen is gray and you add one yellow circle, your eye goes straight to the yellow circle. That's contrast at work. You can use contrast in motion too, for example, a slow animation versus a fast one to signify importance to the viewer. Or you can change the opacity, blur, or brightness. Examples of this could be dimming the background or highlighting the focus area. The moment I started thinking in contrast, my edit it stopped looking muddy. Suddenly there was hierarchy and my viewers knew exactly what to look at. But even with scale and contrast, your edit can still feel messy. That's where spacing comes in. Rule number three is spacing. Like most of these, this one is ridiculously simple, but game changing. When you give elements room to breathe, your design feels more structured and balanced. When I first started, I'd cram text, logos, and graphics together without even thinking. It felt chaotic, but just by adding space, suddenly the same assets felt more professional. Here are a couple of points to consider. White space isn't always wasted space. It's what can make a design feel intentional. For example, take a look at the difference between these two designs, one with a lot of white space and one without. The design Design with the white space makes it much clearer what the focus is and it's easier to understand for the viewer. Think of it like music. Silence between notes is what makes the melody work. So if your edits ever feel overwhelming, ask yourself, do I just need to add more space? And the last rule is what ties it all together. Because it's not just about space, it's also about relationships. The final rule I'll share with you today is proximity. Here's the deal. Our brains assume that things close together are related. If you group elements logically, your design feels clean and premium. If you scatter them randomly, it looks sloppy, even if you're using the same fonts and colors. And here's a tip. When you animate grouped elements as a unit, the whole thing feels cohesive and intentional. Think of proximity like organizing a messy desk. Once you group things where they actually fit, your whole workspace feels cleaner. And that's exactly what it does for your edits. So those are the four design rules that change the way I edit. Scale, contrast, spacing, and proximity. And here's the best part. You can start using them today. No plugins, no extra tools, just awareness. When I finally applied these, my edits started feeling professional without adding any extra effort in terms of the effects or the animations. If you found this helpful, hit subscribe because I'm dropping more tutorials like this every week. And if you wanna dive deeper into motion design and After Effects, I'll leave a link below to my community where we break all of this down step by step. Thanks for watching.